Pardon me, they often that uh, you see Mang Su Tibuti Lazy pulls you, been pulling your jacket and he tries to make you sit down. What's going yes, on? Yes, I want done that to me. Oh, well, other, the other people in the EFF, yeah. but he is always trying to whisper to you. He won't do that to me. But what does he want you to do? No, I, I don't want, I, I hate people who use their age to impose themselves on us. I don't, I don't like it. No one, no elder, no young person will ever pull me. You ought to win me through superior logic and not through age. So he stands up there all the time to call the opposition to order. And I told the EFF that one day I'm going to take him on on that. He stands up to call the EFF to order and he does that to the DA, but he never does that to the ANC. And the ANC people half the time they are misbehaving uh, in that parliament. As an elder, if he wants to be treated as an elder and not a politician, he must stop taking side. So he must prevail over all of us. Otherwise, if he becomes partisan, then he wants to become a role player in a political environment and we shall engage as equal and uh, as uh, professionals. So uh, 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 he has never done that. I mean, I don't, I don't know if he has pulled Floyd next to me is Floyd. <laughs> but I see him more often rising to call people to order. The other time was calling the chief whip of the DA to order and saying, hey, you don't say what what to me, you're missing apartheid and sounding trying to sound radical like that. Just to impress the ANC. So talking about um, about the ANC, they they have who are senior in government, who you used to treat as your elders, you, you did uh, you know, treat them as, as your heroes. You, uh, in, in the case of President Jacob Zuma, you were very passionate in your defense uh, uh, for him. You know, you know, you know, I've over explained the issue of killing for Zuma to you and, and to everybody else that I've never literally met that I will kill for Zuma. All I said was a commitment to the cause. I supported Zuma and I still don't regret supporting him to be president of the ANC against President Mbeki. Not because President Mbeki was a bad president. <coughs> president Mbeki was going to compromise the constitution of the Republic of South Africa because he wanted to go for a third term as a president of the ANC. And he had two third majority in parliament and the possibility was such that they were going to amend the constitution of the republic to give him a third term. So my loyalty has always been with the constitution of the Republic of South Africa more than a political parties and individuals. And we said we needed to stop this smart guy. Smart as he is, we cannot choose his smartness over the constitution. And then we looked around, and then we looked around to say, who can challenge President Begu's almost ready to compromise the constitution, they all went under the table. And then, this one, this one, and this one said, this one said, he can challenge President Bay. And for opportunistic reasons, because one, the man knew that he was going to change. So he has got nothing to lose. He's got nothing to lose. But if he becomes the president, he's got more to gain. So he weighed his options. That even if I lose, I'll come back to the same position I was because I was fired as a deputy president. Then he said, I'm here to challenge President Mbeki. In the absence of the best, he became the best. <laughs> and, 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 that's how, and that's how he became the president. So the killing for Zuma was an emphatic statement in defense of our constitution to say we'll make anyone the president for as long as it is in the defense of the constitution. That statement is used on a daily basis by all of you when you want to emphasize a point. When a person is dressed smart, you say, today you are dressed to kill. It doesn't mean that person is well armed. <laughs> When Papana Papana 
if I'm, if I'm guilty of such a statement, then the SABC and E News and everybody else is guilty because when Bafana Bafana goes to play against Ghana, they say Bafana Bafana today is going for a kill. So it doesn't mean Bafana Bafana today is well armed with AK-47. It means Bafana Bafana is well determined to come back victorious. That's what I said. So how did you fall out then? What happened? We, no, we found out because the Pulukwani conference took very clear positions, amongst others, was to reject the 1996 class project, uh, which was <coughs> turning the ANC into a complete right political organization. And we who were on the left behave, believed that the emergence of Jacob Zuma with Gwede as Secretary General will reposition the ANC to be an organization of the left. Zuma immediately after Polokwani says, nothing is going to change. And I ask myself, but this man was in the same conference where we say change. He thought change we mean him, we did not mean him, we meant policy. So when he says nothing is going to change, that's why I knew the problem has started. Not only that, the first trip he takes is London. And then he's given some small jacket and reassure capital and the queen that no, nothing is going to change. So we knew that what we thought we had achieved in, in Pulukwan actually is a myth. It's not there. Again, Pulukwan he took a decision that willing buyer, willing seller is not a viable alternative. It has not worked. And therefore, the new leadership must go and find an alternative when it comes to the land question. The Youth League then said to the ANC, in line with Pulukwan, let's expropriate the land without a compensation. Let us nationalize. And then they said they thought we were a group of people who don't know how to think. The first thing they said to us was, go and write what you are saying down and bring it here. Because they thought they were going to defeat us through writing. We wrote the most substantive uh, uh, document which till today no one has authored an alternative to it. Presented it to the ANC and then from there they started you know, character assassination of individuals and subjected us to disciplinary processes so that they can downplay the real proposals on radical transformation of uh, the economy. And Zuma thought we played. The Youth League took that decision. The ANC NGC took that decision. The mistake we did was to mix the two. We said, this is the program of action, and we need the leadership that is committed to implement this program of action. And Zuma is not such a leader who can carry forward this struggle. And we told him that. We said, we don't think you are a better person to carry this agenda forward. And secondly, by the way, we agreed that you must serve one day. <laughs> so we mixed the two. Because on the other ones, he didn't have capacity to argue with us. Then he came to the leadership question and realized these people are going to remove me. And the best option is to remove them before they remove me. That's how I fell out of favor with him. I was not saying anything bad to him. I was saying to him, we agreed on one thing. And then secondly, I don't think you are capable of driving an agenda for radical economic transformation. So there is nothing personal between me and Sholos. We've, we've never been close like that with Zuma. You know, media can exaggerate. You know, I don't know Nkanda. I've never been to Nkanda in Zuma's house. And, but the impression is created that we are so close to an extent that I even have a plate at Inkan. I, I, I never had a plate at Inkan. And I've been to Zuma's house twice or three times. This one here at uh, the one Forest that... Forest Town. Forest Town. The one that that man of Mpumalanga bought for him here uh, after, after he was fired at the Union building. I've been there three times. The first time, I can't remember, but the last time I went to Uganda 
was when there was went a, in Canada to, no, Forest, to Town. Forest Town. Was when Zuma said, um, no, there was a discussion that Zuma is not going to appoint Halema as a deputy president. Zuma had concluded that Halema must not be a deputy president of the country. And I went to negotiate with him that you are creating the second Polokwan, just after Polokwan, because Halema is going to be seen as a victim of the city president. And there's going to be supporters of a deputy president against the president, which is what happened between you and 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 the uh, Begi. Gwede, I started with Gwede. Gwede said, hey, I told him he is not agreeing. Went up to him. Gwede said, hey, I went. The second time is when I went to negotiate for the former Youth League members to be in the cabinet. Malusi, Balula, Nati. So they're there because of uh, No, they, we went to present a list. I wouldn't say they are there because of us. But I went to present a list sent by the Youth League to come and talk to the president to include in the cabinet uh, former Youth League leaders, including uh, Tandi. And Zuma said he wants Mbalula to remain in organizing because there is a view that Mbalula must be the Secretary General of the ANC. When I came with the story that Mbalula must be Secretary General of the ANC, I was told by Zuma that Mbalula must be the Secretary General of the ANC. And I said, President, the best thing is that let's put Mbalula a minister, and then at an appropriate moment, we'll then withdraw him so that he can go and serve full time in the ANC like uh, uh, the former Minister of Housing, who was later the Deputy Secretary of uh, the ANC. Wait, wait, what are you telling me?